Hey there, viewers, and welcome back to the South Plain Auto Channel. That's yeah, a 2017 Chevrolet. It's a Traverse. It's the LT. It's got the 3.6, and it also needs some front brakes. Well, let's begin where we always begin. That is, is that tightening the bolt, fella? I don't think so. I think it's taking it off. And we always begin at the beginning. Step one, remove the wheel slash tire assembly. And uh, make sure your brake reservoir is not completely full. Now you guys will probably get a little bit out of this, but I get a lot of, a lot of kickback for pushing in pistons. I'll have you know that I've been looking on a lot of manufacturers and even on our great American Apple Pod Baseball Chevrolet Wuhan. <laughs> uh, they even state in their service data to just push the pistons in. They don't have you opening no bleeder. They know there ain't no monkey business. So just so you know, if you want, take a look at your Chevrolet data. They tell you to use two large C-clamps and just squash it in. There goes one pad. There goes the other pad. So just for those of you folks who are wondering, they're going to give me some grief. That's what Chevrolet says. And I'll have you know, Chevrolet also says, via factory service info, not to grease your hardware. I get a lot of garbage over that too. Uh, not that I really care, just figured I'd let you know. That's how the OEs do it. They tell you, and they even have it in bold print with exclamation points. To clean your mounting surface, your caliper bracket, and grease only capitals, all caps, between the abutment hardware and the bracket. So, for what it's worth, do what you want. I do. But I just like sharing. Fun fact, it is almost Friday, so it's fun fact Friday. We're going to take the old Astro 1822, the little stubby. We're going to whip off the bracket. Those are lock taut. Ooh, they're warm. Yeah, how's that? That makes things better than no, it actually makes things worse. Turn that off. Because I do not own two large C-clamps, we're going to use this apparatus. We're going to come on here. We're going to get that up there. We're going to push our caliper pistons in without opening the bleeder. We're going to bring them in slow. Hopefully, what we want is we want our rubber to fold in and underneath and it looks like it's not going to want to cooperate so we need to burp the baby we need to let a little bit of air out so i'm going to use a funny shaped pick facing towards the piston i'm going to pick up its skin get in there so i'm in the groove of the piston and we just want to lift it up gingerly let out some of the air and it does not seem to be air trapped the old rubber must be just getting a little a little bit wore out. Not wore out, just it's been extended. So if you go in nice and slow, usually the rubber will cooperate and fold in on itself. Nice and steady. Bada bing, bada boom. So those are in. Look like phenolic pistons, aka plastic. And then uh, we'll take and just uh, stick it up here on the strut. Then we will grab a hook because if we don't, the inevitable will happen. It'll fall down and smash my finger. So we're going to give her the old hooky right there. Keep that right out of the way because I imagine this rotor is going to come off kind of hard. We will zippy zap that off there. We'll get the Ugga Dugga tool. Right here's a big quarter inch thunder gun. Uh, what size is that? T30. It says T30. We'll take our T30 out. Stick that to the side. And then, time to bring on the dog. Show you how the dog does it. <laughs> Big nasty. Ain't no sense to mess around here, folks. Let's give her some rattles. Near child's play. Could have got that with a four ounce sledge. Other side came off much harder. Wait for it, wait for it. There it is. Can't be a brake job without this. These 
hub faces in 2017. She's not quite ready for the scrapyard just yet. These are actually quite clean. Uh, can't really justify going in there with a whizzy wheel. So we're gonna give her a little bit of brake clean. Get the surface rust off. That's starting to build up on there with a brass brush. Maybe it's steel, no, it's brass, it looks like. Boom! Clean as a whistle. We're gonna squeeze a little sheep goo on there. Yeah. That's right. That job's not bad. Make as many sheep jokes as you feel necessary. Napper, premium rotor, not a sponsor. They have gotten their wrapping down to a science. So I don't know if I'm paying for rotors or if I'm paying for packaging at this point because they do a really good job at not wanting these rotors to get rusty. What's nice is they give you this anti-corrosive uh, paper uh, no Vox rust vapor wrapper. Uh, it's really nice if you're, you know, if you have handguns at home and you're storing them, stuff like that. Uh, they give you lots of paper with us so you can keep it around, use it for various things like that. You want a wool wrap. Look at that. That's a big chunk right there. Oh, yeah. Look at she's shiny. <laughs> Line up the hole, and then you're going to get your rotor holding screw. You put that on at 109 inch pounds, I believe it was. Somewhere is thereabouts. You have to check service there. Obviously, do not follow these videos for any sort of instructive purposes. We will use one ugga dugga. And now what we have to do is go clean the brake caliper bracket. I'm going to throw in the sandblaster. Big deal. You want to get the, uh, the big deal is, I should say, not like a hey, big deal. You want to get the rust out from where the brake pad hardware sits. And also, we're going to want to pull our pins out. Remove the pin. We want to make sure that they are still have ample lube on them. If not, wipe them off. We'll re-lube them a little bit. These need a little extra. I want to make darn tootin' that they're not seized up. Neither one of these are seized, but again, she is a 17, so has a couple more years of life left in it before it hits the recycling bin. I'm going to go clean this up. Now that everything is clean and shiny, hopefully, uh, try not to use a wire wheel on that. You know, you want to get the rust scraped out. You don't want to shine it up. Like I said, I find that the old sandblaster that we use works pretty well. However, we do lots and lots of brake jobs, you know, five or six a day or so on average, roughly. So we go through lots of brake stuff. It becomes quite mundane after a while. It's kind of mindless work, but it still work. And it makes you more money than doing any kind of diagnostic job, sadly enough. And you have half the investment, so your return's a lot bigger. And you don't have to think too hard, anyways. So now we're going to put our new hardware on there. Always replace your hardware, unless you don't have any. Then reuse your old hardware. But as a general rule, I find it best to replace your hardware. Now on this side, the squeaker goes on the inside, faces down towards the bottom of the rotor. And these have uh, anti-drag clips built into the hardware. So when we click it in one side, and then we gotta push it past the other clip, and you're gonna hear it click, click. And then with your brake pad in there, it should, it should be bouncy. It should bounce up and down, spring back both sides. Nice and easy. Okay, so because it has the little springs pushing it back. A uh, pretty unique piece of hardware. Ford does this on some of their vehicles too. And the best part is they put the little outer clip on there. I don't know if you can see it to keep the pad from slinging back off, uh, which is even greater. That's even better. -er. That way you're not chasing your parts across the floor. Click it on, boom. 
nice and springy dingy. We're gonna pull these little guys out. Let me get a let me get a hanky. Little Mr. Hanky over here. There he is. We'll pull that out. Let's wipe that off. We'll get some silicone. Brake caliper lube. We'll wipe a little on there. Spread it around one of our digits. Stick it back in the hole until it hits bottom. And then twist it to get the boot to come all the way up on the end there. There we go. There's that one. Now obviously if your shaft is all rusty and crusty, you're going to want to clean that off with you know something else. Make it shiny again. Then we'll grab some more silicone. Don't use regular grease on these folks. It'll make the rubber swell up and it'll get stuck in the hole and then you know ultimately make your brake pads, your caliper not move and then your inner pad will seize up or uh, your outer pad won't be getting used, your inside pad will get smoked. Stick it in, that one's in, twirl it around. Well, when we're done, let's put it on the car. Do, do. Make sure you put a little Loctite back on your caliper bolts. I'll slide that baby up here. According to Chevrolet, you clean out the hole with some denatured alcohol, is what they say. They don't want any grease bits in the hole. Of course, they tell you which Loctite to use and so on and so forth. And I think these are put down at about 129 foot pounders, but you're going to want to double check that yourself with service data. Because that can't be trusted. Unhang the caliper. We're going to stick it back up here. I'm going to put it just out of frame so you can't see what I'm doing. And then we want to get a gob of silicone grease or whatever brick caliper flavor you're using of the day. We're going to stick a gob right on there. Why did I do that? Because I don't want to get all the anything in my in my container, man. It's nice, clear fluid. And we're going to smear that around inside the ears of the caliper. It's going to prevent some noise. And then we'll flip her around like so. We'll do the face of the pistons. What's up, bro? Oh, uh, lunch is ready. Lunch is ready? What did mommy make? Uh, fajitas and Ooh. those zucchini. Uh, fajitas, huh? Yeah. So didn't we have fajitas yesterday? Yep. Ooh. Didn't we have fajitas for dinner, too? Yep. Wow. Mixing it up. Hey, you just eat them until they're gone, right? Now we're going to put the caliper on. Do not. Make sure you don't have a pigtail up there in your hose. We'll get this bolt started. Maybe. Now these caliper pins on this style caliper sit on a very specific spot of the caliper. And you'd have to be pretty ignorant to not see how they go. I don't know if ignorance is the right word. Uh, I don't think you'll make the mistake. So pay attention to the the alignment of the caliper pin, the guide pin, in relationship to the caliper. It has a flat spot on it. You line up the flat spot with the flat spot, and you're good to go. And then we're going to tighten them down. We'll grab a torquing apparatus here. We will tighten these to factory spec, which I think is around 47 foot-pounds, but I could be wrong. Ooh, that's pretty snug, fella. Did my torque wrench turn off? You son of a monkey. That thing was on when I picked it up. Now we gotta untighten it. Now we're gonna retighten it. Yeah, I thought that was a little past 47. My feels are telling me that's too much. Sometimes you gotta go by feel. Oh. Hey girl. Are you eating out here or in there? I'm gonna oh all the children are in there, right? I'll come in and eat with the fan jam. Mm -hmm. Looks like you got a lot of good food there. All right, so that's on, it's tight. It wiggles, which is good. Throw the wheel on, pump up your brakes multiple times before you scare yourself backing out of your shop. Make sure your brake fluid's full and then burnish in your brake pads according to OEM service data, which on General Motors is 
drive your vehicle at 30 MPHs and then pile on the brakes using moderate to firm pressure but not locking up the brakes. Not that that's possible with your analog brake system. And then repeat that 20 times, allowing ample cool time between each braking procedure. That's what Chevrolet says. And what I'm saying to you is go down there in that comment box, leave me your questions, comments, criticism, concern. While you're down there, subscribe, ring the bell, click some other buttons so you get notifications. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.